Let's go to the Lord with our prayer before we start. Dear Father, who is in heaven, we give a thank to you. Thank you for saving us from the eternal condemnation and punishment of the hell. We were the lost before, but we were um, misguided and rushing into the hell. But we've been saved by your wonderful grace, which was shown through the cross. And thank you for giving this chance to gather together here. And then you allow us to help, uh, allow us uh, having this beautiful and wonderful fellowship this moment. We know well our time is in hand. So we need your help and guidance. Without your help and guidance, we are not able to carry our Christian life on earth. This evening, we have come together to listen to your voice. Bless all of us with your eternal grace and care of us with your holy, holy uh, blessing. Everything is on your hand. We only rely on you. This is our prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who loves us always. Amen. Amen. <sighs> Yeah, so I was wondering uh, with what topic uh, we have to uh, share um, this moment together. Mm, I, I have many idea uh, when I see all these things happening here in Chilgok Church and all the brothers and sisters, you, you all look so wonderful. And uh, I was able to see uh, lots of walks of our, our Lord here with you. Okay, let's open the Philemon New Testament. Philemon. Philemon chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. <clears throat> 6 and 7. Let me read here. That the sharing of your faith may become effective by acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have a great joy and consolation in your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. Um, yeah, since we got saved, uh, God allow us to help the Holy Fellowship together. Mm. Actually, the faith comes from hearing. Uh, so what kind of message do we need to deserve to hear uh, the, from the words of God? Without knowing the Bible, receiving the salvation is not possible. Why? The lack of information. Lack of information of Jesus, lack of information of Messiah, and lack of information what kind of heaven is waiting for us. Um, when, when I got saved, I, I was wondering uh, where these Gospels came from. That's why I, I studied, I've studied. If we go back to sal our salvation, uh, what we receive, we can meet D.L. Moody, right? And then the, finally the Gospels uh, reached to me. Um, since then, uh, still, we, we uh, do our best to keep on preaching the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible warned us. Lots of different gospels are running around here. But we only focus the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is written in the Bible. That's why John chapter 13, 17, verse 3 said, In order to receive the salvation, you may know the only true God. And next, Jesus Christ. The only true God, emphasized three times. If you know the only true God in the Bible, you are able to face the judgment and condemnation. And then we already disqualified by our own nature. But Jesus Christ, um, he saved us. You know, when we meet Jesus Christ, when we meet Jesus Christ personally, 
And then everyone, uh, like a person like uh, me as a sinner, we are able to see what he did for me. And then finally, we can lay down all our burden because of our sinful nature and because of our life, we can lay down everything before him. And then he can make us understand the true love of God. So, um, God said, we should know about this. Uh, many people nowadays, uh, they know the Bible. And, you know, YouTube and some, somewhere else. And then through many uh, places, that we, can, we are able to listen. The message of the Bible. But yes, they are talking about many things in the Bible, but they still, what is that, beat around the bush, you know, hit around the bush, hit around the bush, whatever. Yeah. But they always mispoint, mispointing, mispointing about Jesus. Um, they never heard about uh, experience. Um, Jesus never be a personal savior of them, but they really sure to enter uh, entering heaven is really sure uh, because of information. The true evidence of being born again is this one: transformation, not the answer and correct answer from the Bible, right? Everyone knows that. You know, in order to understand, in order to know about Jesus as a redeemer. You don't need to be a Christian. This is kind of common sense nowadays. But making personal relationship with him, Jesus could be a personal savior. And then I can make our own relationship with you, with him. That's why the Christian life initiated from that point. Um, making connection with him. This is extremely important. Without connection with him, um, no one could be a follower of Christ, Jesus, right? In this world, as a Christian, uh, there are two types of uh, Christians are here. Let me do this two type here. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5 verse 12. First John chapter 5, verse 12. Let me read here. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. This is really significant matter of human being. The first people, first type of people, the people, those who know the Son. Many people know about Jesus. Many people know about him, right? And then they, they were able to answer, right answer, who, who is Jesus Christ? Yeah, they know that. But let me ask one important question. Do you have the Son? You have it? Or just know about him? Having is different meaning, right? We know God, but Truly born in Christian, we know, known by God, known by, right? We know uh, the name of the President of the United States, right? It doesn't mean you can go to enter the White House, right? Mm. But what if he holds your hands at the gate of the White House and then guide you and introduce what is inside of the White House? No one can block him, right? Known by God, that's the point. If God gives the answer to you in order to make you have it, God knows you exactly. That's why the truly born Christian, we are known by God. That's the point. Understanding Him and then collect some information about the salvation, or we can talk all night long about the theory, that's not the true evidence of being born again. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. Ephesians 
here. <clears throat> we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the of fullness of Christ. The Bible mentioned about this part, about Jesus, about his son, Jesus Christ. The unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son. Uh, some people say that, I do believe. I do believe Jesus is, I know that, and Jesus is uh, my personal savior. Yes, we can say it. Uh, we can, we are able to uh, heard about that thousands of thousand times. But um, what about the knowledge of the Son of God? The people miscarry different conception of his son, right? Still, many people, they really try to believe Jesus in order to escape from their difficulties, final situation and difficulty, loneliness, they're making some good connection with good people. They used to do that. But what is the point of the Bible? This is John chapter 5. Why they need a Bible? This Bible is not necessary for the Christian. The Bible is this one. Chapter 5, verse 39. Chapter 5, verse 39. This is a goal. This is the, our goal. Uh, why should we study the Bible? Verse 39 said, but you do not have his word. Uh, verse 39, you search the scriptures, for in them you think, you think you have eternal life. The many people, um, they all of this point. You search the scriptures. What is this scriptures? The Bible, right? Bible. For in them you think you have eternal life. You are able to find out the eternal life in the Bible. How? Here's the thing. Many people, they used to listen. And they're really good at listening and, and then uh, focusing with a good concentration. But here are the things. You don't, they don't think they, they will have eternal life. They don't think. Just sitting, just listen. They say, no idea. What am I doing here? And then listening to Solomon, most some of you already attend the Bible seminary, you're just watching and listening. Okay, good message. Yes, Bible message is good. God's message, right? Have you ever tried to find out what the secret of having eternal life? I don't care. I don't mind. That's why I know that story. I have attended last time. That sounds, all the presentation is really familiar with me. But they missed the one important thing. You think you have eternal life. So if you study it, as a consequence of that, you will have eternal life. Have you already done? Or not? Yeah. So if you're not clear about this one, you have to focus. What? Why, why did I miss having eternal life? If God is alive and Bible is with his words, you can take it. You can have it from the Bible. Let's go to chapter 17. Same book, chapter 17. Verse 3. <clears throat> Verse 3. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. This is the way to receive eternal life. This is eternal life. You may, uh, you uh, may know you, the only true God. You know, many times, uh, nowadays in our generation, many people, they fabricate their own God with their own style. But the only true God is here in the Bible. Actually, if you read the Bible, Regarding the sin, uh, there's only one chapter described that sin. Total depravity of human being was written in Genesis chapter 3 on me. But what about the remaining part? Remain part. The full of grace, how to be saved. 
all the books, 60 books, 60 books are testifying about who is Jesus Christ. But some people, they try to pick some sentence as a good virtue words, and then really fascinating expression in the Bible. They try to cut that part or me, right? In order to break something, I'm a good believer. That's not relevant about your eternity. So, if you search the Bible, uh, you are able to find out the true meaning of blood of Jesus Christ. Why he has to shed all his blood? Why? Everyone knows that Jesus shed all his blood, blood on the cross. Do you have any connection with you? That blood, have you seen that? I don't have even one splashing of his blood on my clothes, on my face, nothing. But how could you so sure your sin is totally cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ? So making connection with this fact as mine. This is important, right? Being religious, this is not a matter. You know, we have soul. We are the spiritual being, right? That's why everyone has desire to serve and searching the God, true God. Yes, God is here. God is everywhere. The point is this one. Do you have right relationship with him? He's a creature, I'm a creator. Uh, he, he's a creator, I'm a creature, right? So as a creature, have you done all things what you have to do before him? Jesus came down to the earth to save a sinner. I, I'm here as a sinner for what? Just barely carry your life here only? Is that all? Let's imagine you are now driving most expensive car in this world. How long are you going to take a spin there? Hmm? How long? Try to ride that. How long? Drive the car. At least 50 years? I can say one truth to you. Within 100 years, we all return to the one grave of dirt on the ground. Is it true? Yes. Now you have most expensive car on earth, a uh, house. How long are you going to stay at the house? You know, yes, we have goal and then we have to achieve no matter what with any cost. It's okay, no problem. Uh, carrying your life diligently, sincerely is good. The point is this one, for what, right? This is not a matter of religion. This is a matter of life, right? We, we are passing through this temperature world. We have eternity, my own eternity. How could you handle this? Hmm? Eternity. Jesus, he came to the earth in order to give that eternal life. That's the point. That's the reason why God gave this revelation to us, the scripture. That's why if you squeeze the Bible, you can see the blood dropping, right? Blood. If you squeeze Old Testament, you can see animal blood. If you squeeze New Testament, you can see the blood of Jesus Christ. Blood. Why? Blood means sacrifice. Entire Bible testifying one God man, Jesus. Yes, I know Jesus, yes. And if you see, look into the Jesus in detail, you are able to see that his blood on him. Why? Based upon his sacrifice, we are able to stand with our eternity. That's the purpose Jesus came down to the earth. That's why. Uh, entire, uh, through the Bible, if you find out, the reason why the shedding all his precious blood on the cross, you can find most important lesson from the Bible. And then you have to think over and over about this matter. That blood is connected with my eternity or not? You have to understand this one. So even you, if you don't know about Christian uh, theory and then who is Jesus and what is works of the Holy Spirit, it's okay, no problem. But if you know the true meaning of shedding of all his blood, 
This is really a matter for my eternity. Why Jesus shed all this blood on the cross? Why? In order to establish Christianity on earth? No. In order to make you alive. He abandoned his son's life, and then he saved you. He placed the life within him. Many people, they don't understand and miscarrying the true definition of being born again. What is the meaning of being born again? You know, Philippine, hmm? uh, from the Roman Catholic, and then change the Protestant church, they used to say that I, I am a being born again Christian. No, that, that, there is no that kind of definition in the Bible. Let's see, uh, Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 77. Verse 77, to, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins. Remission of their sins. Yes. Have you cleansed all your sins by his blood? If not, you have to find out the way. You cleansed all your sins with his blood. He was there 2,000 years ago. Right? And he shed all his blood 2,000 years ago. With the blood, how he cleans all my sins. I'm here and stuck in 2023. We, we have to find out the why. What is the name, meaning of the name of Jesus? Salvation. Right? That's the meaning of his name. Shall we go here? Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Here. <clears throat> and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Not difficulties, not horrible situation. He came down to the earth to save his people from their sins. So in order to be saved, you should realize you have sin. You have sin. Have you ever think over and over about the serious situation of your sins? Yes, you used to lie, right? Do you do you do you have you ever checked? Telling a lie, what is this kind of sin in front of the Word of God? If you look at the Ten Commandments, at least, we have the sin is horrible sin. Because of the sin, you mean, you, you, you're going to go to hellfire. So this is not my words. And don't try to think, oh, the pastor is really delivered the harsh word. No. Here in the Bible, Bible telling us about it. You know, when I counsel some people, Hey, mister, do you have sin? Yes, of course, I have sin. It means you are the sinner. Sure, I'm a, I'm a sinner. Do you know that uh, because of the sin, you will go hellfire someday? And then he said, what did you say? <laughs> you know, people, they don't think about that matter. Jesus cried. You know, when Jesus met the disabled, he cured them. And then when Jesus met some sick people, he cured them. But when he met the sinner, he cried. Why? The sin is really matter. But if you are not sure about your sin matter before the word of God, you have to check yourself before the words of God. Probably you are a good person before among your neighbors. Probably you are a good father or son before you, among your, uh, your family. Yes. You are the honorable person and respectable person before your student. But we all, before God, we are the sinner. Right? Don't overlook this matter. Why you don't have eternal peace in your heart? Why? Why no peace in my heart? 
We are because we are the lost. Because of the sin. Do you know um, in the Western culture, many you know hitter, uh, many uh, what is that assassinator or the murderer? Do you know what they used to do? Before they do that work, they pray. They pray. And they finish their work and business, return the place, they pray again. What is a great contradiction of our life is this. You really think you can you can deceive the God? He's a living God, right? When you study the Bible, you can see so many judgments in the Bible, right? Whenever you see and observe that judgment, what do you feel? God never overlooked about sin matter, right? It doesn't say, yeah, I'm not going to say, it. stop sinning. No, you cannot do it. You cannot do it, right? You will do sinning, sin again, but that's not the way. As long as you stop your sin, you'll be disappointed. Why? You're not able to do that. That's why you need Christ, right? That's came that was that is coming because of our vulnerability because of that we cannot stop sinning that's why personally we need messiah jesus he came down to the earth Ephesians chapter 2 From verse 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through, uh, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. The Bible says, the saved, being saved, not coming from our works. Which means, whatever you're doing is good, it's not going to help you. Only you need the Messiah, the Jesus, right? So if you have a time, uh, you'd better bring this situ matter before the Jesus and ask him. If you need, beg him. Please God, uh, please uh, figure this out. And then they give, deliver me, uh, deliver the eternal peace to me. And God, he's willing. And he's going to do that. <clears throat> Gospel is good. And Jesus is good. That's why. Come to him. Yes, why not? And he's not going to ignore you. This is a responsibility of the creator. So... If you bring your broken things, if you bring your unsolved matter to him, he's responsible to answer, get delivered the right answer to me, to you, to all of us. As the one who really got saved, uh, we can understand this scripture means exactly that was gift. And there's nothing to brag about. And God, he, so without any condition, he gave us about this eternal life. In Old Testament, uh, there was big complaining in the middle of the Israelites. That's why the fury serpent bite the Israel people. And because of the, their, uh, the venomous, the poisoning, the people were dying. People were dying. And then God ordered to Moses, and they build up the bronze serpent. And they let them watch. Let them watch. The people with their rationality, just watching bronze serpent, really cure the, this issue. If they don't believe it, they don't watch. They didn't watch it, right? They died. But whoever believed it, they watch it and cure completely, right? 
the belief is the uh, that's the belief, right? Not doing something. So, so I find out what Jesus did for me. It's easy. Just to look into the words of God. And they watch it, and then they were able to be survived. Likewise, one young man died on the cross. Let's get rid of his divinity from Jesus Christ. He was a humble person who, who is capable of carp carpentry, you know, carpent work. But he was God himself. And then he he's the only one who can save the sinner. So let's see uh, Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, verse 17. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a, a little child will by no means enter. Have you ever been a child like this? A childish. This is a really hilarious word, right? Childish. Number one, you try to insist you're the adult, right? You know, muscle part. And then you try to be adult enough. But have you ever been a child before his message? If you try to be a child, you can take it. Like a child. Hmm? Child. They, do you really think they are naive? No, they are earnest. Not naive. They are the earnest one. God demand this one. So our even our mind was created by God. He knows our mind completely, totally, thoroughly. We cannot hide our mind before Him. Right? God really loves being an honest person. Somebody who carries an honest mind, yes, it's easy to see. The crucifixion, and then easy to understand what Jesus had done for us. And then finally, we are able to rest in peace. Worldwidely, people try, uh, they, they used to think worshiping the God, worshiping the God. They really, they try to do something to worship Him. But God doesn't need anything from our hands, He's Creator. Right? He doesn't use money. What kind of currency he used to use? One, pesos, dollars? Hmm? He doesn't use the money. Right? That's, that is our measurement. And what kind of song he loved to listen? Hmm? Hip hop? Or metal? So whatever. What kind of song? He's creator and he's provider. And he's the first reason of all this being, all these things, right? That's why if you have a question about your salvation, you need to go to him. How? Open the Bible and then find the right answer. This is my recommendation. So mm, the Bible is a really huge volume, right? And then really hard to interpret. Sometimes we used to we misinterpret that. In case we we, we if we misinterpret this part later, we can crash and then uh, bump into the different theory together. It's really hard to figure it out. That's why the Bible is not a book. Study alone. Understand? That's why you should be taught by truly born Christian, and they know well. How to go to heaven, right? You need the support. You need the support. Being, this is not a matter of being nice. This is not a matter of being kind. This is a matter of the life or death. So, 
Be honest. Not before the people, but before the God. The Jewish people, um, they used to think uh, performing and observing many works before God, this is a true way to worship God. That was misunderstanding. That's why one day Jesus cracked it. Let's see, John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verse 28. All right. John chapter 6, verse 28, 29. Let me read here. Then they say to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? They made a question to Jesus. We may work. The works is a plural time, right? Plural time. But Jesus answered, verse 29. Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God. This is a singular time, right? That you believe in him whom he sent. Only one work is demanded to inherit eternal heaven. Not doing so many works. What is that? Believe in him. Believe in Jesus. Some people say, I thought I, I, I am believing God. What's the evidence? You are right place of your faith. What's the faith? I have to say to you, attending and being religious, this is not the point of the evidence. Like I said before, the true evidence of you being born again is transformation. Let's think about this. One day you walk, on the, walk along the road and you bump into the person. And then what, what would happen? And then, you know, you, you can make... Uh, very, very, what is that? Ugly face, right? And then say something to you, hey, be careful. You can say that, right? But one day you walk into on the street, you hit by the bicycle. What would happen? I know one brother, he broke his rib after hitting by the bicycle. Yes, you, you, you could be injured. And one day we walk on the street and you hit by the truck. What would happen? No one knows. Yeah. You have to rush into the ER, right? But one day, when you walk on the street, you hit by the big rock truck, you know? Very huge rock truck. So what would happen to you? You will die, right? Flat. But let's think about this. One day, when you walk along the street, you hit by the creator of the entire universe. What would happen in your life? Hmm? Just make a handshake. Hello, creator. I'm here. Totally your life could be changed, right? This is the true meaning of being born. You meet Jesus, your Lord, the God, hmm? nothing happened. Just added up some more information about the Bible. That's not the right answer. Some people said that. They accumulate some good works before God. This is really important to enter the heaven. No, that's not. Of Jesus said, they ask, how many works do you need? But Jesus answered, only one work you have to do, believe in Jesus. That's why it's a sinner who deserves to go to the hellfire without their good deeds and without their good righteousness. Uh, just receive 
the Jesus is my own savior, and then I admit my ownership is belongs to Him, right? This is what you have to do in your lifetime. Jesus came down to the earth to save the sinner. We came down to the earth to receive the salvation. This is what Bible says, right? So, as uh, those uh, people who uh, receive this uh, salvation, uh, take uh, Jesus as their own savior, personal savior, this is what God wants. So, if you get there, you achieve all the goal of your life. That's all, right? And the remain life, this is a kind of extra life. Hmm? You can carry on with him together. Let's see Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. From verse 7. Uh, from verse 6. 6 to 10. Let me read here. For when we were still uh, without strength, in due time Christ died for the uh, the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. When we were the enemy, even we were the enemy of him, he loved us. And then he died, he was willing to die on the cross. And then he had done, and then he, he declared it is finished. But now, but now, if you already become a son of God, he is going to love you much more than before. This is a covenant, and this is a solid and concrete promise to us. It was written. Even I was an enemy before, he loves me. But by now, after being born again, after become a son of God, yes, definitely he's going to love me much more than before. Right now, I am a son of God. Why? Yes, being because of being born again. You know, some people misunderstanding about the being born again and receiving salvation and redeeming all our sins. It's the same, same, same. Same definition. I was born as a son of my father, and I will die as a son of God. Why? Because I was born again. This is a big work. And now let's think about this our Christian path. We still we are capable of committing sin again, over and over. Um, remission of sins, yes, that's the true uh, meaning of being born again. Without forgiveness of our sins, there is no way to be saved. Here, um, uh, the day of redemption in Israelites, uh, we used to, uh, in Hebrew, we, we say that Yom Kippur, Right? The kippur comes from kapar in Hebrew. Kapar has the meaning of a cover. God, He just uh, cover our sin, cover, which means covering. Can you see my hands? But hands are here. Right? Just covering. That's the meaning of remission, or redemption. Right? That's why, since you got saved, if you don't um, uh, just carry the uh, ordinary Christian life, it's flipped over and come out all the sins again. This is the identity of a Christian. 
He just covered, Jesus, he covered all our sins with his mercy, blood. Don't flip over again. And don't uncover this one, right? In order to keep this covered continuously, you need Christian life. Or else, sometimes you open it again and then watching it, oh, you really suffer, right? Cover it. Maintain this situation through the ordinary Christian life. So truly born in Christian, we really do love to listen to the words of God, which is coming from the words of God. Right? So let's see first John chapter four. First John chapter four verse sixteen. Here, and we have known and be beloved, uh, believed the love of their God as for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God is in him. Abiding him, and how could we love the God, God, the Lord? Hmm? The Bible said, God is love. Yes, it's a well long story, right? But he who abides in the love abides in God, and God in him. What is that love? Why we used to say God is love? What happened when God loves man? He died on the cross. Right? Let's see. Titus. Titus chapter 3 verse 4 and 5. Titus chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. But when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of the righteous righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Here, in the gospel of Jesus Christ, the two things is combined together inside of that. The first one is washing away of all our sins. And another part is renewing of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes uh, people are confused. Also, I was wondering about understanding this verse. Washing of regeneration. Yes, redemption. Eternal redemption is good. Yes, I, I, I could understand. I can accept it. It's not coming from me. Yes. It depends on his work on the cross. But point is this one. Do I have renewing of the Holy Spirit? I was wondering. Am I? Let's think this part. Yes, understanding about gospel of Jesus Christ is okay, good. But do I have this one renewing of the Holy Spirit in me? If this is inside of gospel of Jesus Christ together. Some people magnify about only this part, washing away of my sins. Yes, I free from my sins. Good. This is really good, really good. But what about renewing of the Holy Spirit? Do you have it? If not, check about your salvation. You know, salvation is not the agreement. Understand? Agreement with the truth cannot guide you to eternal heaven. But if you follow this way, renewing, uh, after receiving, uh, after for, uh, being forgiven all your sins in advance, and then if you're still guided by the newness, uh, renewing of the Holy Spirit, yes, you can feel safe. Then you, your, your salvation is really secured by his hands. So those who really got saved, hmm, they have returned to God. Previously, they had gone astray a different way. But those who really got saved, 
Yes, they have returned to God and they have known by God. And then there is a connection. You know, Christian life is not attending. Without being born again, you can attend the church a thousand of a thousand times until you're dead. But connection is different. Even you are not here, if you're connected with God, it's no problem. Right? The Christian life is connection with Him, not just attending Him. This, which means this is a personal thing, personal. Right? Sometimes it's very hard to explain about my Christian path and Christian, my, my, my faith as well. Uh, but I know I already built up this true connection with him, and then he's still guiding me, and then he's still talking to me when I go astray. And then he still negotiates with me if I take wrong things, and then he teaches me with a warm heart and nice and kind heart, hey, that's not good. Just turn your way and let's go with me together. You know, this is renewing of the Holy Spirit. Do you have this experience? If not, what's wrong? Check it personally. This is a personal thing. So this is the most important part I have to share with you. Why? You know, in order to build a good relationship with you, we talk nicely, right? <coughs> And then sometimes we show a smiling face with you and then build up the good and nice mood together. It's good. It's okay, no problem. But based upon uh, the truth, uh, one thing we have to make this clear for us is church. I'm responsible for telling to you about this matter, why I'm a pastor. So this is my part of my ministry. Are you sure to go to heaven? If not, the church is the place to help you, right? So for the sake of your own soul, for the sake of your own eternity, right? Let's reflect my life. Now let's focus about this matter again. I'm responsible for telling you about this matter on behalf of my Savior. So, let's see, uh, after being born again, you already heard about many times, being abide in Christ. Let's see that. John chapter 15, last verse. John chapter 15, verse 3, and three 2, 5. Let's catch one important point here together. Three, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. That word is gospel. Verse four, abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruits of itself unless it abide in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I, I in him bear much fruit, for without me we, you cannot do nothing. You can do nothing. You know, two types of Christians are here. The first one. Uh, without Jesus, they cannot do anything. But other part is staying in Jesus and they bear much fruit. Which means God emphasized and magnified this part. Christian life is the life with fruit. Fruitful life. Not just staying calm. Not just attending. What kind of fruits do I have? What kind of fruits do I have? This is what we have to check. Our out figure, our appearance is going, getting worse and worse. Why? Because of aging, right? But our inner man, my soul, become more beautiful since we got saved. And then bigger and bigger. 
and the Christian life provide, provide us lots of protein, something, and then we could build up the lots of muscle in our spirit. Right? So, those who build up, hmm, work up their muscle in their spirit, they can carry the ministry of Jesus Christ. That's why it's enough reason to move on continuously. So, um, in order to in order to do something for my eternity, uh, you have to make this clear first. Your salvation first, right? Um, myself also, when I got saved, I don't even know about Jesus. I don't even know about the church life. I don't even know about the, what is Christian life. But one thing was clear: my sin was gone, totally gone. Without this sin. No matter what with any cost, I can go to heaven, if the Bible is true. That was really clear. That was, you know, that it, bring, it brought me really true happiness inside of my heart. You know, from the bottom of my heart, I was able to say, oh, I'm done. I'm done. But living as a Christian is a different matter. Without providing, without support of my Lord, it wasn't possible. That's why I have to keep on eating spiritual food, you know, spiritual food. And then I was able to move my step in Christ, right? So, uh, Bible sense of the life make us capable. So, Bible is important. Right? So, uh, if you are not clear about salvation, please volunteer your time. Right? If you surrender something, God will give you as a great compensation of your surrender. And then He's going to provide everything to you. Yes. You feel enough, and then you, you feel eternal happiness. Hmm? When God's come, okay, prepare some space for Him. Right? Everyone knows that, yes, we are really busy nowadays. You know, in order to reach the truth, absolute truth, you have to stop your busy step. We used to get some, uh, yeah, we used to figure out some of our so urgent matter always, right? But figuring out your eternal matter is not just urgent matter, urgent and important as well. Just for for the sake of your own eternity. So mm. just do it. Go for it. All right. So I, I heard the news from um, me, probably. You will have another Bible signal, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, let's check the schedule and then volunteer your time to fix that. This is your matter. I'm done. Okay, no problem. If I die right now, right this place. Yes, surely 100% I can go to heaven. From what? From what, uh, what kind of supporting issue? Uh, what support my confidence? This one. His covenant. Let's find out the way in the Bible. All right? Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for giving this chance to study your words. Please let us consider seriously about our eternal, our eternity. And please, um, you may fix our broken part, and then you may guide us to the right way. We need your help and guidance. We are preparing a coming Bible seminar with Pastor Choi. Please let us be prepared to receive your message in our heart. This is our prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who died on the cross instead of us. Amen. Okay, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out. Um